Okay, let's do one contrast between ethylene and formaldehyde. This, this is our output for ethylene. And this is our output for formaldehyde. And in both cases, we have just the HOMO and the LUMO of the output. So when we think of reactivity of these two structures, and if we have a strong nucleophile reacting with them, we could draw a nucleophile reacting with either of them. We could do this, we could attack the CC pi bond, or we could attack the CO pi bond. Which have we learned happens more? Well, this is the reaction that actually works. Formaldehyde is a much better electrophile than ethylene is. In fact, we never learned about ethylene as an electrophile. Why not? Uh, ethylene certainly has a LUMO by which it can react with a nucleophile. Well, here's why we, we learned it that way. We, you know, we, we learned it as it's, it's a matter of polarization of the bond. The CO bond is polarized, and that gives us the delta plus on the carbon of the carbonyl, and you don't have that polarization in ethylene. Well, what does computational chemistry say? Computational chemistry could tell us about partial charges as well, but one thing it tells us is the energy level of the LUMO. So if we look at the energy level of the LUMO, MO number seven in ethylene, its energy is, let's say it's 1.4 electron volts. The LUMO in formaldehyde is at 0.8 electron volts. So what you have is a nucleophile lurking around in the solution. And let's draw a little energy axis here. And it can either interact with ethylene, which has an energy value of plus, plus about 1.4 electron volts, or it can react with a lower energy orbital of formaldehyde, which is, has a value of about 0.8 electron volts. Well, the nucleophile, which is looking for the happiest home to dump its electron density, it, it's going to want to react with the molecule that has the lowest energy LUMO, because that's where those electrons and the nucleophile are going to be happiest. So formaldehyde is a much better electrophile than ethylene is. Um, and it's because it has a lower energy LUMO for that pi bond. So these are the, the kinds of things that we, we can understand reactivity. We can understand it the, the way we've learned it all semester. But we can also use computational chemistry to confirm what we have learned all along, that indeed formaldehyde is better. And you know sometimes we get molecules that, that are hard to synthesize or molecules that maybe we don't have the chemicals on hand to make. We can deal with them computationally and make predictions about reactivity before we actually perform the reaction. And that, that's one of the big advantages to computational chemistry. In the end, computational chemistry does not tell you what's gonna happen experimentally, but allows you to make a prediction that should give you confidence in understanding what the outcome might be. And, and that certainly has value.